Hello everyone, this is Erlin from the Experience Research Lab. Today I'll explain several types of survey questions most frequently used in a questionnaire. To help you better understand, I'll use the questionnaire created by TechForm to solicit feedback from its users, including me. So here's the flow. The first one is the welcome screen. It contains a welcoming message introducing the researcher or the organization commissioning the survey and the objective it is trying to achieve. Another essential piece of information to put here is the confidentiality statement and incentive arrangement, if any. If the respondents are happy with everything mentioned here, they may continue. You may think, well, I don't see either introduction or a confidentiality statement here because they have touched on it in the email sent to all the target respondents. Therefore, if you distribute the survey via email or any other media that allows you to introduce yourself and briefly explain the nature of the survey, you can save everyone's time by simply saying thank you. Now, let me walk you through the survey questions. There are seven types here. Uh, legal and consent question, NPS questions, open-ended question with short text, uh, opinion scale question, multiple choice question, open-ended question with long text, and yes-no question. The legal and consent question is one of the must-haves in any research project involving human participants. It allows all target respondents to read all essential information and confirm that they understand the risks, benefits, and procedures that they should follow as participating respondents. There are only two options for a legal and consent question. Agree or disagree, accept or do not accept. By asking the respondents to select either, researchers save themselves from any legal dispute that may come up later after data collection. A net promoter score or NPS questions aims to measure loyalty, particularly the likelihood to recommend a brand, product, service, or experience to others. This question comes with an 11-point scale ranging from 0 to 10, 0 to 6 for detractors, 7 to 8 for passives, and 9 to 10 for promoters. NPS equals the percentage of promoters subtracted by the percentage of detractors. If you're new to the NPS and want to learn more about calculating the score and interpreting the results, I recommend watching this video. An open-ended question comes with no option but a blank space to fill in with a single or multiple characters, numbers, words, phrases, sentences, or any even paragraphs. Therefore, the number of characters must be adjustable to accommodate both short and long text. Instead of choosing, picking, or selecting, the respondents participating in the survey must type or write the answer to the question manually. This way, researchers can capture missed out information and discover new insights. An opinion scale question is crucial to measure respondents' beliefs, opinions, perceptions, or views of a particular issue or topic. Unlike the NPS, it uses a flexible scale from a 3-point scale to an 11-point scale. If necessary, it may come with an even scale. 4.2 10 point to force the respondents to choose either the negative or positive side. If you want to learn more about the opinion scale question and other types of survey questions used in a questionnaire, I recommend watching this video. A multiple choice question or MCQ is the most commonly used in a survey using a questionnaire. Instead of scale, it uses a list of options starting from 3 to unlimited. However, to avoid confusion or fatigue, it is advisable to keep the number not more than 10. When it comes to the answer, an MCQ question may allow the respondents participating in the survey to select only one option. It's called a single answer. In other cases, it may need to select more and even all of the options, and it's called multiple answers. A yes-no question is the simplest of all questions. It asks the respondents participating in the survey to say yes or no. That is to say that it only has two options, and therefore the legal and consent question technically belongs to this type of question. Last but not least is the end screen. It wraps up the survey with a message saying that the respondents have reached the end of the questionnaire. There are several reasons why someone reaches the end of the questionnaire. First, they belong to the target respondents and have answered all the questions appropriately. Second, they do not belong to the target respondents and get screened out. The third one, they belong to the target respondents but fail to do the survey carefully. In the first case, the end screen should thank the respondents for their participation in the survey. If there is any incentive offered, it should mention when and how the respondents will receive them. 
In the second case, the end screen should also explain why the respondents see the end of the survey. Since such a willingness to participate indicates interest, it is advisable to provide an option to learn more about the survey. In the last case, the end screen should at least provide an option to learn more about the survey. And if you want to learn more about this last case, I recommend watching this video. It explains how to ensure the quality of data obtained from a survey with the red herring question. Next time, I'll talk about analyzing survey data, excluding responses from screen out respondents and the bots. Today, I'll leave you here. Thank you for being with me. For more insights into research, secondary or primary, qualitative or quantitative, please subscribe and visit our website. Listen and watch our content. They are available in text, audio, and audiovisual format. See you in the other videos. Cheers.